just tell him to come on Cheetah Cat Line. Um, I'm, I, need, I can't even remember. I think we're close to Mumba Junction. I'll get his audio and I'll tell him which way to come. He just needs to get to Cheetah Cat Line. Right. Who have we got here? Let's see. One young male. Those two are grooming themselves. This is the Nguma Pride, by the looks of it. it. Looks like an adult lioness that's being groomed at the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There should be eleven, shouldn't there? Five adults and six youngsters. So I'm pretty sure that this is the Nguma Pride. There might just be one that's laying down on the grass that we just can't see for the moment. Um, but to me, and I can also only see one young male, which we know is, well, part of the Nguma Pride. Very nice, Lions. Where have you been? We've missed you. That's for sure. I'm quite glad we actually came down here. Very nice to see them. It's been such a long time since I've last seen a lion. Wait. So, she didn't like that to be sat on. Chitty Chatty Meg, you're very happy about uh, seeing the lions. Fabulous, I'm glad. I was just having a little listen just to make sure that I can't hear anything else. Now, good news for Ralph, though, is that they're not moving into Torchwood. They seem to be up and moving back in towards Duma, so um, that's perfect. Let's hope that they keep going that way. What's on your eye? Like a little piece of fur. That's the young male we're looking at. And perhaps his eyelashes are a little bit on the wet side and have clumped together. Oh, there's an extra piece of fur. You gonna do a big yawn? Thank you. You don't look too happy. You look miserable. Absolutely miserable. Exhausted. Probably not enjoying the fact that uh, they've got dew on their coats. They do look a bit wet. Eh? Walking through the tall grass. And from the stories that their footprints have been telling us. They have been on the move for most of the night. Now, I don't think that they will rest right here. They need to find some nice shady spots. Beautiful. Now, Brent is obviously quite chilly walking down in the Mulwati. However, he's found that thing in the sky that should hopefully warm us up. Okay, everyone. We've got the lines just here. And what a payoff that we've had because... We've um, obviously been tracking them this morning, and you see how that team works, eh? We had Brent out on foot, and we had um, and Taylor tracking on the other side. Now, just uh, there's a bit of a wipe coming there. We've got a bit of warm air that's been making the the, um, the screen mist up a bit. So I'm just going to pop my nose in here, everyone, just to have a look on this side, and just to try and get a view on them. They're in the thick grass. Are you right if I go a little bit further? Are you sure? Thanks, I don't want to block your guys' view. <laughs> Thanks. I just don't want to drive on them as well. Just watch. Let me see. There we go. There's a nice view on that one, but we don't want to disturb it too much. There we go. Okay, there we go, everyone. Looks like the Nkuhumas. Okay, thanks a lot, eh? Enjoy, folks. Wonderful, everybody. So we did see that on those tracks this morning, nice and early, that there were some sub-adults with them, and it looked like a lot of females. So, But I just got very excited and didn't look too closely at the detail. I just wanted to know which direction they were going. And uh, Brent and I were very quickly in contact with each other, and then um, Taylor on her boundary patrol... Uh, found them. So that was great. Teamwork, I think, all round. So once we can get a nice little clearer view on them, we'll try and identify these. 
So, sorry about that. We're, with the cleaning of the screen, it's just a bit of condensation. Now, Mac Attack, a coalition, is generally more so to do with the males. That is where they join forces to uh, make it uh, better for them to, or easier for them to be able to take over a pride or to challenge a pride male or territorial dominant male in an area, whereas um, a pride is uh, mostly made up of the females and the youngsters. So you can have male and female in the pride, um, but uh, the coalition is generally that group of males that uh, come together with the, with, the, with the same goal in mind in trying to take over a, a pride. And, and also, initially, the, a coalition will be started just for pure survival and in trying to uh, catch prey. So they, they pull their resources together, and together they are stronger. There's a pride being the collective forces of all within the, the group of lines. And the one, you see, we're getting this constant fogging up. There's another wipe coming, just so that you know, because we're just trying to keep this screen clear. You see, we've got a lot of cold air, and every now and then we get this warm patch. So like when you're sitting in your car, when it's warmer on the inside than it is on the outside, then you get that frosty color coming onto your window or on the screen. In a minute, I'll go a little bit deeper in here, but it seems these lines were very active. From uh, They've literally come past quarantine, across the, the Mulawati, probably gone past Twin Dams, come all the way up to Cheetah Cut Line, nearly at Chitwa. Eclair, thanks for your question. Um, a single male can very often dominate or or control a territory. It's not always coalitions that that are just sort of the rule of thumb. But um, obviously, it does make it easier if you've got a, a few of you. But um, there are still many territories just dominated by one male lion, and um, yeah, it's not uh, it's not always necessary for them just to to have coalitions. Now, I'm not in the best position here. My shadow is being thrown straight over these lions. I'm just waiting for them to, they all seem to be settling off in a little bit of a better open patch, a little bit in front of us. Um, and I'm hoping that I can get on the other side of them and then we have some better light because obviously they're in the shade here and uh, in the thick grass as well. There's another wipe coming, everybody. And Sensei really trying his best to keep that screen nice and clear for you. So, yes, I am going to try and reposition and get us into a better view of these lines. And then maybe we can start to identify the particular individuals in, in amongst them uh, because we've got our little ID pack with us. I've got for the leopards, the lions, and the hyena now. So we can have lots of fun identifying the different personalities. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to reposition, try and get us a much better view and have a look at these individuals. So while I'm doing that, let's head you on over to Taylor, who said when I left her that they'll be looking for leopard. Into the shade, it seems they've had probably a very active evening, uh, as we saw from the tracks. Um, and uh, they've done a lot of marking along Cheetah Cut Line. We found some of their scat, and we saw some spots where they were obviously spraying as well. And so they've done a whole patrol. Um, not sure if they did any hunting or not. Maybe as they were crossing through the Mlawati and um, different areas there. But for the time being, it looks like it is now sleepy time. And uh, it one of the females was just allo grooming one of the others and uh, it seemed at the time one of the, that one there it um, she's got a, a very dominant predominant little v cut on the on the top of her right ear and she's also got a very dark nose now that we know is one of the oldest or the oldest female uh, within the Nkuhumas, 
probably born around 2000, 2007, 2008. So she's, she's hitting about 10 years old now. Um, she has had a couple of litters of cubs. And, um, well, it's nice to see that she's still doing very well in this pride of lions. Well, it doesn't look uh, like they're having too many problems. They all look very healthy. Little sub-adults as well, they're doing pretty well. Mina Mu, um, the survival rate of lions in the wild uh, generally depend upon the stability of the area. And that, and that all comes down to mostly the males and how well that they can hang on to their territories. Now, we do know that there it seems to be a little bit of <coughs> excuse me, upheaval at the moment where the Birmingham boys um, uh, have gone a bit south towards Mala Mala and we've got the Avoca males coming in a little bit from the north with the uh, space that has been left by the Birmingham boys. So there is potential uh, upheaval that could start, um, but these uh, sub-adults that are here, uh, they're old enough to be able to not be killed by um, those Avoca males if they had to establish themselves and start to cover these females. So it all depends on those males. Oh, look at that. So everyone, I mean, we're going to sit here and see how much they put their heads up, but this could potentially be them for the day however we're not going to leave them just yet because we spent quite a lot of time tracking them this morning but they're not going anywhere for now so let's head you on over to Taylor with a very misty Chitwa Dam yeah that is very true look at that they are um, definitely not sun seekers or lions and um, well, they've all gone very flat now and that's what we often say when we're watching lions, flat cats. Well, the odd flick of an ear or the swishing of a tail. Look at that one. It's got a bit of a tick in the black part of its ear. And there, lions do get quite full of ticks as well. Um, but the aloe grooming that they do does help, as well as their own grooming, personal grooming too. But um, I just want Senzo just to come in here and we'll... Have a look at the little um, identification that we use uh, with these Nkurumas because obviously they can all start to look very much the same. So we've just been using this and I obviously uh, tried to use it as well because these are new individuals to me. So these are all the adult females and first one here being the oldest. Um, she was born 2007, 2008. She's got a chipped lower right canine. Her face is also lighter than the others, um, and she's the only one with a dark nose over there. So that was quite easy to see. She had a very dark nose. She's also got a little bit of a, a, a injury below her left eye. Um, so that was quite easy for us to see. She was the one with her head up that we did see for a little while there. And, yeah, obviously now it's difficult for us to see anything because there's just a, a brown mass of animals there. But the ridge-nosed female, she was born 2012. Um, she's, uh, she's got dark ridges that run from the corner of her eyes. She's got a pink nose with small little uh, spots on it too. And uh, all, all of these females have had cubs. Um, but with a differing sort of successfulness. Then we move on to purple eye, which is uh, obviously a very easily identified female. Um, it seems her eye was injured uh, in April 2017, and, and as a result it has turned uh, slightly purple. So quite easy to see uh, that. Then we have the amber eyes which she is uh, also quite easy to recognize with that very, very different colored eyes. They're a lot darker fawn color and going into that amber hue. She's also got a small neck on her top right ear with a V-shape. Um, so that's how we identify her. She's got strange marks on the back of her neck as well. Um, and then the youngest one uh, being the fifth female, and um, she's got a pink nose with small little spots. 
a nice fluffy chin over there. And um, she's also had quite a few female uh, uh, cubs, but um, there are quite a few of them died as well. So that's it. Well, that's what you can see. At least you can see their faces on our on our ID chart over there, because when we're looking at the pride. Now, Anne, you're asking a good question. Um, which one is the the mother of the young male in the pride? Um, I do believe. Let me just check. It might be the youngest female, actually. Two died. It, it's either the ridge-nosed, purple eye, or the youngest. Because there were there was um, quite a few males, but there was um, also quite a lot of mortality. So I'm not exactly sure. That's a good question. Um, but as I say, there was a, um, there was the ridge-nosed, purple eye, and the youngest. Oh, there's a bit of sneezing going on. Now, Lauren, I think um, it, it's always difficult to tell what's going to happen with the young males because uh, they've probably got the, the, the hardest life of the lot. The females, they will, if they're in a nice established pride like this, they're just going to be remaining with them and uh, continue with that pride for the rest of their life. The males, however, they need to go out and uh, uh, try their luck um, with both surviving, finally catching food, and then trying to evade uh, dominant males initially and eventually um, trying to take on their own pride. But if they can find another male in the area that is of similar age that is also now solitary, then they could pull their resources. But it's never for sure. So a single male born, um, well, obviously he wasn't born alone, but the other males have died. Um, he's got a lot less chance than, for instance, if there, if there were four or five young males here. So... I'd say that his chances are highly diminished in comparison, but it doesn't uh, uh, mean that he won't go out of this pride and go find some other males of similar age that have also been kicked out, and he might get lucky. But if you look at it as it stands, I would say his chances are slim. But that's not to say that he's not going to uh, make it all the way and be in charge of a massive coalition. Now, there was a question that came in about a um, about how many uh, male lions have black manes and um, what is the reason for it, which is a good question, I would say. That's fantastic. Um, it's generally um, the... The lions that we find in the Kalahari. Oh, thanks. I just, uh, old Luke in FC. It's Luke now who's in charge there. He just uh, reminded me that it was Pangolin. Thanks for your question, Pangolin. Um, it is actually um, historically the lions that come from the more desert. Uh, biomes and, and areas like the Kalahari and up into the Namib that have black manes. And I have, I have a feeling that it has a lot to do with, um, the, the kind of habitat that they live in, um, because of that very hot environment, um, and as well as being, uh, it seems like that blackness, it must have something to do with the thermoregulation, uh, because for me that a lot of coloration with animals has, has, um, uh, sort of the use being in, in that department. Now, I'm not exactly sure on the specific nature of how that would help. Um, obviously, black would be more absorption of heat. Um, so, in the desert, you do know that it gets very cold at night, extremely cold, because it does, you know there's not much to retain any of the of the heat of the day. So, it might be down to that. Um, but I'm not quite sure. It, that makes sense for me um, with those desert-type lions. The Kalahari and moving up into the Namib um, and even up into Tosha. And so it seems the hotter the environment um, and the colder or, or, or changing of temperature results in lions having much bigger and, and blacker manes. So I think I'm going to now head off and see if we can find some tracks of some other animals, maybe find a leopard or two. Um, but while we do that, let's head you on over to Brent on foot and see how he's going.